Well, welcome along to the south of France with the Pyrenees, the stunning backdrop to the city of Pau, the venue for the conclusion of the canoe slalom season like no other. Usually in November, Pau would be preparing for the snow season, but this weekend instead is hosting some of the world's best white water paddlers. Sadly, no repeat of the banks overflowing with passionate fans. The last time the city hosted an international canoe slalom event, COVID-19 restrictions ban on spectators. International travel restrictions have also diminished the talent pool. There are still several Olympic and world champions ready to attack the course, including two gold medalists from 2016 at Rio Games. Joining me to witness the Po World Cup event, Batman Gutierrez ready to cast his technical eye over the action. And this is a course you know very well. Hi everyone, so yes, it's true, I very I know very well this course, so it's a beautiful course here in Pau. Uh, a lot of paddlers really like and really enjoy uh, this whitewater course. As we see the starting list, a mirage of up-and-coming countries from around the world of international canoeing. It's very much from a woman, Pigeon Down, see the real top talent and especially going last Helen Shuro of Spain the current and reigning Olympic champion so today we have 25 gates on the course so it's a maximum of gates we can have uh, in the course because it's between 18 and 25 so today it's 25 with six upstream gates Carolina Rossi, the first to take on the course here in Po. Only senior finals was at the 2018 Rio Worlds in K1. The 50th place finish. But as with a lot of the paddlers here, this is a huge opportunity afforded to them to try and reach a first World Cup final. Yeah, exactly for the for those paddlers, it's really challenging for them, and they will improve with this experience. We were talking earlier about the countries missing this uh, World Cup event. This is only the second World Cup event of what has been a COVID hit season of kayaking. So we've seen quite a few of the big countries not make it here to Bo. Yes, it's true, like a lot of big, big countries are missing, like Germany, a lot of Czech guys are not, are not here, and also the Slovenian, and a lot of more, but still have a really good paddler today. I think about the last Olympic champion from Spain. Certainly still plenty of huge talent here in Bo. But also, maybe there'll be a run that will catch the eye from the young guns as they try to make their own piece of history. It won't be, a, for many of them, a first World Cup final. Yeah, it's a really challenging course for her because, you know, in her country, they, she don't have a... she don't have a big white weather course like this, so it's pretty... Enjoying to see her here in Pau. Must be a huge change for the athletes who don't come from countries with white water on their doorstep to have to find places to train, find places to compete. Yes, yes. Exactly. It's really hard when you didn't never paddling on the white weather pool like this. It's really hard, but she's taking experiences and it's really good to see this nation. Well, especially for Leah Baldoni, who will be coming next. It's Carolina Rossi. She's just making her own mark here in Poe. Previously, we saw her 47 already. Leah Baldoni. 19-year-old Canadian, making a little bit more of a measured start. 
So at the moment she has plus two on gate number six. So to remind you, there is penalties you can have. So if you touch the gate, it's your body, your paddle or your boat, you have plus two seconds. And if you miss the gate, you have plus, you have plus 15 seconds. It's almost being disqualified. Well, you can see how the split time is going to work. And uh, 133 gives you an idea of the challenges Carolina Rossi faced. The Argentinian the World 361, Nia Baldoni. You see, it's unlikely the teenager would make a final here. It's a final at the 50th Grand Prix at Poe in September's events representing Poe Canoe Kayak. In 18th as Lucy Bodu one ahead of Lucy Pio. So it's not her first time on Po Waters. But, uh, so far, not too bad a run, would you say, Batman? Yes, well, she has actually a 50 on gate number five, so it's it's pretty a big big mistake. Yeah, but... no, still <laughs> a lot quicker than Rossi, but I imagine we'll expect to see the times drop quite quickly as we work through the field as Oletes Arregui takes to the water for Spain. The one-year-old inside the top 300 in the world. She competed in two heats at the 2020 Prague European Championships in September, but missed out on semi-final spots, never reached a senior semi-final. So this huge step up for the 21 year old Spaniard. Yeah, the Spanish know very well this course as well. Just they a short walk over the border. Yes, yeah. exactly. And they did selection races uh, for uh, the Spain team. They used to do. Spain along with France already big named there. Olympic athletes, Ayalen Shura, will go out later, Olympic champion, along with Ander Rossegi, going to their fourth Olympic Games for Spain next year. Aragé has reached a K1 final, but that was in the team event. European Championships, Spain coming sixth. She may be ranked one at the minute, but Arregui yeah. just been enjoying the experience. So Madison Corcoran, one half of the twin sisters from the United States, She's 18 years of age and a decent performance in Tassin, in the World Cup won in October, an 11th place finish overall in her semi-final. It'll be a tough ask to try and push for a first final at this level. It's certainly raring to give it a go. Yeah, she's really improving. Yeah, by yeah, and she decided to come in Europe to have a little bit of training and races. Certainly a very kayaking family. Her and her sister Michaela, daughters of Michael Cochran and Lucy, Lucy Sander. The father competed in the C1 slalom, the 92-96 Olympic Games. The Americans helped out by their dual citizenship in Ireland, which I'm sure it's a lot easier to get over a train in Europe. She's on the second part of the moment. The second part of the of this white water is pretty hard. You're a little bit tired, and it's a most technical part with a lot of big stoppers.
certainly focused to try and get through to the end, but ranked second this early stage. Decent enough run from Madison Corcoran. It's Naomi von Verhoeven and Dora takes to the water, just 17 years of age, already 256th in the world. First World Cup appearance for the teenager Andorra, just 300 kilometers east of Bo, across to the Spanish border. Yeah, Andorra, it's a really small country, it's the smallest country. And so it's really good to see some people from Andorra, and she's doing great. She has only 17 years old. We're obviously seeing the advantage of some of the lesser known countries or athletes who are geographically close to the event as we saw in Tassin. A lot of athletes from around Slovenia area and now we're seeing the Andorans, the Spanish, uh, being able to make it even in these uh, COVID times. It's obviously more difficult for other nations maybe to have made it through the travel restrictions. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, also, it's also really really better when you know the course you are more, co more confident and you know well every part of the courses and well, certainly a measured approach to the course for these athletes as she struggles to keep control of her boat takes it for a spin okay. like i said before there are a lot of big stoppers on this second part one of them. Well, certainly have woken her up. The white waters of Bo. Certainly not going to be warm as Hannah Craig. The uh, experienced Irish paddler takes to the water. An athlete who has competed at the very top level, finished 10th in the K1 Olympic final at London 2012. Age of 37, Craig saying Tokyo 2021 would be her last Olympic campaign, and this could possibly be her last year competing at an international level. So, a huge opportunity for her here in Po. It's a really tricky path here. A lot of penalties. Nobody. No penalty at, the, at this moment. There's a really interesting story, Hannah Craig, of the, the mother of two, uh, partner and coach. Han uh, spent eight months living in a caravan in France because of the lack of whitewater courses anywhere in Ireland. Uh, and she's particularly talked about in recent times her challenges with mental health because of the difficulty in pursuing the sport she loves. Uh, obviously, it must be so difficult, the finances, uh, the access, and all the things that go into trying to be a top paddler. Uh, I imagine that's something you, you know something about, the, the uh, challenges of staying in the sport. Yeah, for sure, and some country help very well the, the paddlers, but for some it's really hard to keep paddling and keep a really good uh, level. So they have to make choices and uh, and sometimes your lifestyle is changing. Well, Hannah Craig, second currently. You can see from her expression, she knows it won't be enough. But, uh, an unfortunate ride for the 37-year-old. But a lot of these riders, along with Sidia Khoda of Morocco, will just be delighted to be back on the water. In some ways, lining up at the starting point is a success in these uh, coronavirus times. Uh, you can imagine the frustration of the athletes through lockdowns and uh, cancellation of competitions, that they'll just be delighted to be back on the water. Yeah, they are training all year for these World Cups, and when you can't do it, it's really hard for your mental. 
I imagine as an athlete, you have focus on where you're going, what you're going to do. If you suddenly take the destination away, what are you training towards? So yes. to keep that focus must be. Yeah, yeah. And, and also you are training every day, and like every morning, every afternoon, to to make sure to go into your, your goal. And when you can't do it, it's really frustrating. Yeah, Ana Satila, the Brazilian canoeist, we'll see later on today, spoke herself about how she likes to train hard. And so train hard and compete hard, and talking about the struggles of not being able to do that. Yeah, it's really frustrating. Frustrating as well for our early paddlers. Obviously, talking about the experience they can take from this ride, but their competitive edge was still leave them frustrated, I'm sure. Yeah, she missed two gates at this moment. She tried to paddle back, but it's going to be hard. Challenging. Marcelia Odar, French-born, representing Mor Morocco. She did take a silver at the African Championships, but missed out on the 2016 Olympics. In Kamal to gold and ended 21st out of 21 Rio Games. Daria Kuznetsova, she's a thumbs up and ready to go. Thumbs up, let's do this. Russian 181 in the world as we break into the top 200. She was 16th in Tassin at the World Cup event last month in Slovenia. Still looking for a first major final. We've seen already it's uh, certainly looking very challenging out on the waters of Bo. She's done the second part of this course. She has only one penalty at this moment, but she missed one gate number 12 and she paddled back, so she didn't have 50, but she lost a, a lot of time. I guess, obviously, she's gained more than losing 50, but it's not going to be a yes, great help in overall. It's not going to be enough to the final, but still, still good to pedal back and try to have every gate. Daria Kuznetsova, also a dab hand at the extreme canoeing that we'll see late afternoon. She finished with a silver medal in Tassin behind compatriot Alsu Minasova. Look like there's going to be any opportunity for a first World Cup final. K1 solo. You see her come through. Currently ranked third. Still a long way to go through the competitors. It's next on the water, a little bit of Latin flair from Mexico. Sofia Reynoso. 24 years of age, a double bronze medalist at the 2019 Pan American Games in Lima, both in K1 and Extreme K1. So she certainly got pedigree on the Latin American continent. And she bring something special here. It's looking already very tough. It's really good to see this nation on water today because it's not a really big nation on the kayak, uh, kayaking world but the international federation trying to push them up and it's working because we can see some paddlers here today so she have a lot of penalties right now it's not a really good run for her, but she's taking an experience. Well, exactly, and also, as I said, shown she has pedigree with those bronze medals at the Pan American Games, but tough to be over in Europe and being able to really get to grips with the whitewater courses here is Sana Skian of Iran. Pairs to make her claim the 28-year-old 
six World Cup events competed in before today. Like a lot of the paddlers we've seen thus far, yet to make a final. Uh, COVID certainly has some small chinks of positivity, particularly, as we said, for riders from smaller nations a chance that they may not get again to come here and at least try and reach a final. First section was not too bad for her. She just did a small mistake. Gate number six. She's in the middle of the gate. She is not too fast, but she is okay. This section is really tricky. 10, 11, 12. We can see 11 a little bit higher than 10. So it's really hard for the characters to take it. And they have to spin the, this gate, number 11. So the down, downstream, you can go direct or spin the gate. And this gate 11, you, you don't have, you have choice. I think some really good paddlers will do maybe, but I think this course today is really tricky, so you have to speed this gate number 11. Certainly seeing how challenging it's been thus far. Certainly, I'm sure the uh, athletes will be sleeping well tonight. Our day in the kayak. She do not have 50. She have only she, she only touched some gates. It's, it's not too bad for for this girl. Like she she didn't have a lot of experience on the big white trailer. I guess it's interesting at this semi-final stage because we're going to have a mix of inexperienced and experienced paddlers. Yes. But even once we get to the experienced paddlers. They're not going to be going at full pace. This is just the semi-final. Oh, yeah, exactly, they just yeah. want to qualify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the fastest parallel, like, you have to go just in the middle of the gate and go, like, 80%, 90%, and then you can go into the final. But for some, you have to go 300%. <laughs> exactly, and very tough start for Mataje Oten, Dutch paddler. 24 years of age, finished 15th overall at the 2020 Prague European Championships, but failed to qualify out of the heats. 21st, her best World Cup finish, that came five years ago. The last World Cup event was in the United Kingdom in 2019. She finished 24th. start just four penalty points already accumulated yeah this class part is really tricky as well the second really hard part and also it's at the end of the course so the battle are really really tight there a plus 1.3 for Oten currently ranked second Bullets and again still holds on to that first position with Georgina Collin of Australia. King her claim. Yeah, she's from Australia, but she's training in Prague. She's doing studying there. She's studying there. I imagine for a lot of the uh, countries, that's a very good way of getting access to the whitewater rafting if you're a university in certain cities uh, that you'd have better access than you would have maybe in Australia. Yes, for, for sure, like in Europe, you have a lot of whitewater courses and a lot of really good level, but also in Australia, 
I think about uh, Jessica Fox. She is one of the best care girls uh, in the world, and you have a really good condition in Australia to train. But for some, when you when you don't when you don't in the in the team, it's really hard. So it's maybe good to choose to go in Europe and have a training there. I guess also in terms of uh, the competitive edge with the strength of kayaking in Europe, that, that yeah. would obviously be a help. Sure. Now, mentioning Jessica Fox, bronze medalist at the Olympic Games in 2016, broken by ILM Chorot, the Spaniard who will go out last in this semi-final. This gate at 15, okay, a tough ride for the Australian, Colin. Competed heavily in whitewater canoeing as well. The build up to the 2019 season, part of asking for donations to pay for our coach to be able to travel to Europe with her. Tough ride for the multiple national champion. As mentioned now, studying in Prague, which certainly helps, but over to Russia, World 103. Seria Zialova finished 14th at the Tassin meet just outside Ljubljana in Slovenia last month. That's one that I enjoyed. She's heading to number 10 right now. Played the first tricky part. She did spin on 11. She touched the gate, but the line was pretty good. Second tricky part, and she missed the gate. Number 16, the 15, sorry. Well, an athlete to said goodbye to the under 23 level at the 2020 European Championships with a gold in the K1 team event alongside Znetsova. Just a little bit earlier. So now, very much part of the senior age level. Maybe pretty disappointed. The ride so far in Bo. This is a course you've paddled yourself, Bertrand. Yes, a lot of time. It's really popular in France. It's a really uh, challenging course and it's really good for training. It's almost an Olympic course. Well, Katarina Bekova, just 18 years of age, the Czech paddler, taking on this very challenging course. What would you say, in your opinion, is the major difference between Tassin's whitewater course and, and this one in Poe? As we've seen, these are the two World Cup events we've been lucky enough to have in these COVID hit times. But are there major differences you you can see between the two courses? Yeah, for sure, it's really different. You can't really see it, but when you paddle, it's like really different, like the upstream are different, and also the current are a little bit faster in Tarsen, especially the first drop. And the second part in Po is really challenging as well with a lot of big stoppers. It's really different courses, you can't really compare. So when the paddler used to paddle here, to train every day, you have a little bit of advantage. And more frustration if you get it wrong. For sure. <laughs> and a lot of your family and friends are there to try to push you. So unfortunately not today, because with the coronavirus, there isn't there is nobody uh, Yeah, the disappointment the as normally the banks would be packed with passionate fans. I hope we're helping at least to bring you closer to the action. I hope that uh, next year we'll see 
some positive news in terms of getting spectators back to watch top class paddling. As we see, Rigue is still with the quickest time until it was just usurped. Bekova snatching by point, well, 1.8 seconds over the Spaniards. Still likely to see in the final. Romania have their athlete taking to the water. Laura Alicia Chica from Andorra, World 90. Yes, yeah, she did spend a lot of time in Peaimpo to train, so she knows she the course well. And she's doing great at the moment. She touched gate number one. A lot of Parallels did touch number one at this moment. Is that a really bad thing to hit the first <laughs> one? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, yes, for your <laughs> motor, yeah. it's quite hard to keep going and keep pushing, but you have to. Yeah. Well, as you mentioned, uh, Po regular, in fact, her best World Cup event was an 11th place finish. And that was here when she was just 17 years of age. So she has prior. <laughs> Uh, top 10 is what is required for a place in the final. Uh, there's still the top names to come. The listing done by World Ranking will certainly be tough for Felicia Chica. Yes, she was so living in France. She's living between Paris and Toulouse. When she's doing studying Toulouse. Because in Andorra there isn't a, a course to train. Well, only the one penalty, but not the pace. Disappointment etched on her face. 22 year old. The hope for better. But the experience there nonetheless for the Andorran. So Ria Shribar of the United States, just 18 years of age already, world number 80, her first time in Po competing, and a 15th place finish in Tassin last month. She uh, maybe looked to try and better at least that result. Great at the moment, the first occupier was pretty good. She have only 18 years old, and you can see a different style between characters, and she is very strong, especially for her uh, age. Already minus 9.08 on the quickest time set by Bekova of the Czech Republic. Shribar certainly has shown she's got plenty of potential. Youngest paddler at the Rio. 2018 World Championships, finishing 18th in heat two. A silver medalist, the K1 Junior Youth Olympics, two years ago in Barcelona. She's improving a lot. It's quite impressive. She's doing a great. And also, I know a little bit her, and she's coming in Europe to try to have a better coaches and better skaters for training? Well, certainly that is obviously helping. 7.37 knocked off Bekova's time, and it's all smiles. I think the first smile we've really seen. Yes. She can have a smile because she did very well, a little bit, a small mistake on the end of the, the group, but except that, it was a pretty, pretty good run. Teenager making a splash as Lucy is the Delova. Takes her opportunity. She medaled in each international championship attended at junior and under 23 level. She's the bronze at the 2017 junior K1 World in Slovakia, as well as junior world and European goals in the K1 team events. to see 
that rise in quality as we head in with the top 100 ranked paddlers in the world. Nedalova currently 77. She's a bit down on Ria Srimar's time. Srimar really with an impressive and confident performance. Yeah, the, the first part of uh, Ria was really fast. So she can maybe go a little bit faster on the second part. Let's see. Rock just about getting in the way. I think she will be late from Ria. Incredibly hard to keep control. Yes, the paddlers are really tight there. So you have to keep control of your boat. Doesn't look like that's a run she's going to remember fondly. As a woman, Pigeon takes to the water, hat off, glasses off, showing off her muscles. Uh, certainly one whose uh, top form was absolutely brilliant in Tassin. She won her qualifying in the semi-finals and then managed to take gold in the final ahead of her cousin, Camille. So very much form rider. So now here on home water. Yeah, she's from Po. She started paddling very young, and she started Po. She's coming up this moment. She improving year by year. She did a really good season at this moment, and she touched gain number four, but still a good run. Let's see the last part. She stayed stuck a little bit on this big hole. As you say, a rider on the up. Last part was fast as well. It's going to be maybe enough for the final to enter to the final. She certainly wants to try and go for double gold in back-to-back -back World Cup events. And at the moment, ranked number one. At the time, she'll hope to give her best opportunity to do so. Certainly the French, in some ways unsurprisingly, have been the quickest. Yesterday's heat says Alsu Mirazova paddles out. She had a, a golden spell in Tassin as well. That came in the K1 Extreme event. Russian taking gold there. Three times podiums at the Extreme K1. Looking to make an impression on her K1 event. She's a, just a bit late, but she do not have a penalty at this moment. She's aiding number 11, the first tricky part of the course. She's a bit late, and she missed gate number 12. She tried Paddle back, but it's difficult for her. Uh, so she will, she will have 50 on gate number 12. You can see the top, was it the line that, that pulled her out of position because she just looked suddenly like she was stuck in water she couldn't escape from? Yeah, it's quite hard because 11 is a little bit higher than 10, so you have to enter a little bit lower on gate number 10 to keep your speed and serve very well the wave. Because I imagine once you miss your point of entry to then hit 10, 11, you're in real trouble. Yes, and you know the current are fa faster than you, <laughs> stronger than you. Very much so. Uh, Leia Sorieves of Spain. Next up after that disappointing Run from Minnesota. I certainly expect to see her later 
in the extreme K1. Now it's the 20 year old from Spain, World 45, her best World Cup performance. It's a World Cup 2 in Bratislava. Years gone by. It's a semi final. She finished 11th, missing out on a final which she's yet to reach. She has plus 50 gate number two, so she almost passed the gate, but to remind you, you have to, you need to have all your heads and one part of your boat in the gate. So if not, you have plus 50, so she passed like half, half of her, her head and it's not enough. Certainly not enough, and it won't be enough for any hopes of a final. Now it's really just a focus on, I guess in some ways, trying to enjoy the ride, but certainly physically and mentally, this is uh, some examination. She missed second gate, she tried to paddle back. She did it, so she had at the moment only 150. It's not going to be enough for the final for sure, but she's taking an experience and she's trying to finish well. So far, the uh, one paddler already qualified for the final, Uma Fijon, will be there as she looks for back to back World Cup goals after. Terrific performance in Tassin. Currently still quickest through her home course here in Bo. See Sabiemes battling the white water of Bo here. As other paddlers have found. It's, uh, Need mistress to try and manage and conquer. And she certainly just try and take away some of the knowledge that she may have gathered from a tough ride. So after that run, Prijon is joined in the final by the Czech paddler Bekova as we see Monica Doria Vila Rubla take to the waters the third Andorran we've seen the 20-year-old already having broken into the top 50 in the world last appearance in Bo at a competitive nature 2019 Euros although didn't escape the heats in K1 stronger performance in C1 third in her semi-final to reach Final where she finished 10th. Yeah, she's doing both kayaking and canoe. So, the kayaking, you are sitting on your boat and you have a double blade. And canoe, you are lean on your knees, knees on your boat, sorry, and also a single blade. So, she's doing both, but today it's not her day. She has a lot of penalties. And not going to be making. You talked about while we were in Tassin that the, that the pros and cons of doing both are you can learn things from both uh, yes. disciplines, but also during a weekend uh, you're going to have to think about how much energy, as we see, Evie yeah, from Lefav take to the water. The 16 year old already making great splashes in the sport. She had a stunning Tassin, double bronze. K1 and C1, just frustrated not to quite go a little better. Maybe there'll be a golden weekend in Bo. Yeah, she's a really impressive paddler. She's only 16 years old. She's really fast. And already the reigning Pan American K1 champion. So she has won big on the senior stage they're looking to try and make it a golden Euro european experience she certainly 
loved Tassin particularly, trained for a month there and been previously one of her favourite places in the world. And now a chance to make a splash here in the Pyrenees. She has a really different style from the older partners. You can see a different style. She's really like strong. Some paddlers are like a little bit smooth and she's like a little bit less smooth but she's stronger. I mean at 16 older. years of age though, how she has so much space for improvement or being getting stronger, getting faster. Would you say that Olympic finals are things that in her future she'll be aiming to win? Yeah, for sure. For sure. She has a lot of time. Uh, she will be she will be late today but I'm not sure if it's gonna be enough for the final. Currently second, so she does qualify for the final quicker than Bekova. And good news for Spain, Arege, who was uh, ranked one for quite a long time. She has qualified for the final. So we start to run out of paddlers. Victoria Us of Ukraine making her way out, pointing to uh, national badge. An Olympic competitor finished 12th in the Rio Games. And, uh, the recent meet in Tassin. She finished 10th, although plus 54.06 down. This game, disappointment there. Can the world 19 improve here in Po? Yeah, she's faster at this moment. Let's see the second split. But the first section was pretty good. She started the second section, the hardest section actually. We'll see the split here. She's really it's tight. Only just down on Vision's time. And certainly considering Vision's time currently is plus 9.41 faster. And the next competitor, Lenfa, so far she's on uh, course for the final. Yeah, and also Roman did very well the second part. She was really fast. But she's not bad. Also, let's see this, the last part, artist. A competitor who studies ah. sports psychology. She just did the gate. Certainly need to keep her psychology strong. I think it's going to be enough for the final. And rank two qualified. So happy with that. Hoping for improvement. She's back later for the women's K1 final. Marie Zelia Lafon pops out. A bit of a surprise. And 33 year old Tokyo bound was also the quickest in the unofficial heats yesterday that was dominated surprisingly by French athletes. And, uh, exciting time for her with the Olympics hopefully next year. Well, she did a really good up on the left. It was really impressive. She's really impressive here on this course in Po. I think she's, she's the fastest girl here in Po, so she can win today. Well, her only World Cup podium previously was gold here in Po four years ago in 2016. 16th at the Rio Olympics as well. Certainly one of her best years. As mentioned, qualified for the Olympics next year, which hopefully will go ahead. She's a little bit of time on gate 17. She stays stuck a little bit before the gate and she also touch, touch it, but still okay for the final. Five qualified yeah. for the final so far. She's hoping to join them. And she touched also the last gate, but for sure. It's okay for her. Well, ranked second, 
the end, just 0.68 down, the second fastest of penalties, pushing her behind the Pigeon, but France with the top two qualifications for the final. Veronica Vojtova will expect to join them, shooting her way to the final. 30-year-old finished 13th in Tassin last month. Certainly one who's medaled heavily at World Championships, six in total with goals in the Extreme K1 in 2019, K1 team in 2015. Yes, yeah, she did an amazing first part. She did use all the current. She did play very well with all the current and she's going really fast right now. Ah, she made a small mistake. But it's okay. She didn't last much time. You can see from her facial expressions the hard work being put in, the quick breathing. Certainly it's a course that's really taking a lot out of them and when you think they've got to come back later and take it on again, as you said earlier, trying to put in maybe 70 to 80 percent effort because you're going to have to have keep something in reserve for the final. Yeah, for sure, but it's like between... It's a, kayaking, it's always between balance, you know? Like, you have to go fast, but not too fast. You have to play with your balance, but not too much. And for some kayakers, it's different. For some, you have to go really, really fast, trying to go into the final, but for some, you have just to respect your project and your line, and it's going to be okay for the final. But I think for her, she didn't do a big mistake, so it's going to be okay for the final, I think. As we see, that is classified with a qualification time. And sitting fourth in the semi final is France's Lucy Bodu. Takes out to the water, 27 year old. Has it reached a World Cup final since Lee Valley in the UK, June 2019? That was in a C1 final. Her last K1 World Cup final was uh, the overall World Cup final at the Seo d'Argel in September 2018, when she finished fifth. Hoping waters here in France will help her a bit. Yeah, the first section is not really good at this moment. She touched gate number one, she lose a bit of time on gate four, she was a bit low, and also she touched gate number six. Let's see the second section. Everybody, everything is possible right now. She was a double team medalist at Prague 2020 Euros in K1, C1 and silver and bronze respectively. She has won gold in Po, that was in the 2019 European Championships. K1 team event. Failing to retain that in Prague. Instead with the bronze. Looking for some solo glory here, but stuck on the rock. She's still got time in hand, I would imagine, to try and make the final. Yeah. Yeah, she would. If she didn't do a big, big mistake, she will go into the final. She has a good experience and she's pretty good, so I think for sure. That's confirmed. She okay. certainly know there's plenty of room for improvement. But uh, Bodu safely into the final. Fifth passes so far as now Brazil's Ana Satila looks to make up for the heartbreak in Tassin. She looked on course for a gold medal, only to miss a gate. Almost at the death to end plus 49.18 seconds down in ninth. But she did bounce back on her first ever World Cup gold in the C1 in Slovenia. Certainly one who really is a cross-discipline paddler. She's a really talented paddler, really strong, and she's doing 
very well at this moment. But, you know, like I said, it's only the qualification, it's only the semi-final. So for the final, everything is reset. Quickest so far for Pijon, 1.86 seconds. Yeah. Already, just at 24 years of age, she's been to two Olympic Games and will be, will be looking to medal when it comes to the Tokyo 2021 Games, her only international K1 medal, a silver 2015 Pan American Games in Toronto. She is the world champion in extreme K1 two years ago. And, uh, so far, despite the two penalties, an extremely good run. She'll want to cut out the mistakes, but in the semi-final, no problem reaching into the top ten. Certainly seems to be a little bit tired after a run, but now it's time to enjoy the run of the reigning Olympic champion, Mayelen Churot of Spain, 37 years of age, and became Olympic champion, beating Kiwi Luca Jones and Jessica Fox to top the podium, improving on her bronze in London 2012 and already safely qualified to defend her title next year in Japan. Yeah, she's she's very fast, she can she can be really fast, she's the last Olympic champion, she knows very well. This course in Po, she's training in La Seau d'Argel, near to Po. So she has everything on her side today to win. But everything can happen. She's already with the quickest time, 0.58 on Pigeon's side. As we mentioned, though, the focus really just to make sure no grand mistakes, but she has won in Po before in a World Cup event, although that was eight years ago in 2012. Bronze picked up in 2016, which, as we know, was her most golden of years. Her last World Cup win was Prague 2017. 14 medals in World Cup events, seven golds, four silvers, and three bronze. And there is no doubt she will be battling for an eighth gold here, the finale to uh, disrupted 2020 canoe season. So, Mayelen Chorot safely into the final, only the fourth quickest. That won't really be of much concern as they look forward to the final later today. It's going to be a big competition, big race this afternoon for the final between these girls. Well, it's a really big achievement, particularly for Bolatz Arregui, who went out just third, 21-year-old Spaniard, world 288, but she has reached her first senior final. But it's the big names that will be expected to really make a splash later. Pijon, the fastest. La Font, as well as France, show their pace. But plenty of challengers for the podium. Brazilian Olympian Satila, teenage sensation Lepa, and especially Olympic reigning champion Jurot, will certainly be there or thereabouts. We'll be excitedly bringing you the women's final later today.
So as you see, the athletes on the side of the banks here in Po, fortunately, no fans here as we see the classification from the semi-finals. Romain Prigent, the quickest on the field, Marie Celia Lafont, second. She was quickest in the heat, safely into the final, along with Victoria Us, Olympic champion, Chorot, Brazilian Olympian, Satila Postova, teenage American, Lefa Czech Petkova, a brilliant ride from Aragé, world 288 from Spain, and making up the top 10. Great achievement for the Dutch paddler, Marta Foten. As we get ready for the men's event, certainly plenty more exciting talent ahead. Anatole Delassou was the quickest in the heats, just 19 years of age, and the Poe native already showing he could be a big splash here. Lafit Krenedish of the Czech Republic, top-ranked paddler here, world number six. Although Boris Popo Levu, French world number eight, it's a former world K1 champion, European champion, certainly have something to say about that. Well, this brilliant course here in Po opened in April 2018. It took 2018, that'd be. <laughs> Quite impressive to get it ready for that quickly. As we see Alex Baldoni onto the water, opened in April 2008. First used to train the French team for the 2008 Summer Olympics in Beijing. And uh, was Olympic medalist Tony Estanguet and his older brother Patrice, who helped make this site. 11.7 million euro facility. And, uh, certainly. Uh, Bertrand, you can say about Tony Estanguet, particularly is very much an idol of Po and France in general in kayaking. Yeah, in kayaking world, actually. It's a really the icon of the canoe. So he made this course in Po and, and a lot of young paddlers want to try kayaking because of him. You know. So. He was a really good paddler in France. Olympic champion in uh, C1. In C1, three times. Three times. So he's the president for the 2021 20, Olympic game in Paris. So keep in touch with the sports and it was a really good opportunity for the Kaki world and the Kaki friends. Well, it'll be very exciting looking already forward to Paris 2024. I imagine the, uh, the canoeing will be in Paris down the Seine. Yes, there is uh, a course, a new course in Paris new from two years ago or one year, two years ago. So some part of the team are training there at, uh, at this moment. Well, Alex Baldoni ranked number one. He is the first out, just 16 years of age. Huge opportunity for the Canadian. But evidently, won't expect to see him back on the waters as Thomas Karlovic of Croatia takes to the water, 18 years of age. And did compete at this year's junior and under 23 European Championships. K1 semi final, ranked 18th overall. Who managed ninth in the K1 team event. Did actually perform at the Prague Euros senior event, although failing to escape the heats. So a huge opportunity to compete in a men's K1 
K1 World Cup semi-final. So little anticipation. A final is in his future here. And he's doing... Ah! I talked too fast, sorry. <laughs> the curse <laughs> of the say, commentator. He's doing a really good run. And the first session was pretty fast. Just did a small mistake on the 12. It seemed like we got a different angle there. It was quite a nice... The, the, the yeah, high view yeah. here is quite... Uh, yeah, I think it's with his drone. Yes. Much more interesting perspective of how the course looks to the competitor. Yes. And you can see how all the light can be hard at times. Yeah, in some ways this angle makes it all look quite compact, whereas you can see this way much more where that line exists. Yes, and also you can see where the current are. And he did a big mistake on this last part. I think it's 50, yes, it's confirmed. 50 on gate 23. Decent start, falling apart right at the end. It's a disappointment for him. He did very well at the first part. It just takes one second for a good run to be completely wiped away. We certainly saw that with Anna Setila in the women's event yeah. with Tassin. Sure, and it's the other things to keep going up to the finish line because the last part is really physical. Have to keep going with a good technical. Certainly, this is a, a longer course than in Tassin. The Tassin times were sub 100 seconds. We're seeing here, obviously, the fastest yeah, time from Prijon is 110.9. Yeah, it's different the course, course set as well. Huh? So, it's a little bit, a little bit longer. in Cadur. 757 just to really show you exactly competitors who are getting a chance here at the World Cup semi final level. 19 year old Moroccan reached the final of the under 23 K1 team event when they finished 19th but couldn't escape the heats in the K1 level. Really enjoying to see this view with the drone. You can see the different stoppers, the second part. You can realize how big they are. Yeah, it's really a great perspective to really elongate the view in which oh. competitors are struggling with. on this first part, nine seconds faster. Small mistake, but still pretty good for this young paddler. Just 17 years of age, failed to make the final in Tassin. Just struggling to keep control of the boat. Yeah, a little bit of control on this hall. Having to put a lot of effort into not missing that gate. Still, 3.19. Quickest so far, but in terms of a final, obviously. The penalty is coming, 17, and he roll. Really yeah. started to struggle. I think he did a really good uh, first part, and maybe too, too much aggressive. 
had too much aggressivity, so... Maybe a little bit of excitement with the good run and then... Yes, you have to control that, you know. You have to go in fast for sure, but not too fast to keep a little bit of energy on the second part. And trying to go fast on the second part. Well, we've seen how challenging the pole course can be. You can see the disappointment, I think, particularly as Bertrand said, the first part looked really, really good, aggressive and quick, but the second half really just took away any dreams of a final as Tom Morley of Ireland, another 17-year-old on the waters here at Bo, certainly saw the Irish contingent in Tassin. To Tom Morley competed at the 2018 Youth Olympics, finishing 23rd. A couple of 2020 K1 team finals, 43rd juniors world events, and 7th in the junior Euros. Evidently, tough ask. He's gate number 12. It's a difficult one for ah. the riders from it's also gate number 15. It's going to be tough when you know you have to perform something out of the ordinary to reach a final. But, uh, missing gates is very much now. Yeah, when you have focus 15. on the experience. Yeah, yeah. When you have 15, it's really hard to, to keep going, keep going pushing. The luck of the Irish, not in place for Tom Morley. Still a huge opportunity for a teenager to see what the top level looks like. Yes. And it's really motivating to go into the training educated then. Just 17 years of age, a long career ahead for Tom Morley. His race here at Po in K1 over is Dario Cuesta. Starts his quest for a final spot. The 21-year-old enjoying a quick start. Already early penalty at four. Hit number four. But I think the time is going to be good. Six seconds faster. This up was pretty good. Ah, oh, to tie again, number nine. 50, 50 seconds of penalty. It just changes the whole complexion of the ride, knowing you have a missed gate, particularly this early. Yeah, I think it was to tie, maybe one minute up to tie it, and the current push him in. Then it's finished. Such small margins, obviously, in terms of being in the right position to the wrong position. Yes. And by the time you're in the wrong position, there's not a lot you can do to fight the waters. And also, you have to control every movement because the current is changing a lot. You have to adapt all the time. Meets here at Bo. 
yet to reach a semi or final at senior K1 level. Want to take an opportunity here. At Tassin and Mariupo finishing 19th after the semi final in Slovenia. Competed at the 2016 Wild Water Canoeing World Championships, 8th K1 Classic final. Tough ride here, the wild waters of Po. A lot of penalties today. It's a really challenging corset. Demanding physically and mentally. That's why you'll see time start to clock down when the more experienced. Yeah. Top paddlers come out. Yeah, so today we are we have three challenging parts. 10, 11, 12, the first challenging part, and then 13, 14, 15, and then the last part, 21, 22, and 23. The gates really, really the gates really rack up in that final section, really, just to punish you. Yeah, really tired. It's, it's going to be hard to go fast on this gates. Joshua Joseph next to take up the challenge. 19-year-old, 120th in the world. Competed at his first World Championships last year, although couldn't escape the heats. The American are really aggressive on the first part. Certainly. Every American and you know it's hard to keep going like this until the finish line but let's see what's happened we'll certainly come Maybe. with a focus and uh, joshua joseph did reach the final in tassin finishing 10th 19 year old so that best showing looking to build on that world cup showing Certainly, he's smashing the time of those who have gone before. He's doing good. Ah, one small mistake here, he hit the rock. It was a bit of time, but you have 11 seconds faster. 11 seconds in his pocket, although we'll have to wait to see, to see how the rest of the field go. But he's done well to recover from getting stuck. Before. Still trying to be aggressive. Yeah. Still a good run from him. And it's the first Six sub of 100 seconds. 16.48. It's just that one moment he got stuck where he lost a little bit of time, but just looking back. Game five. Back on that, but Luca Rossi, he's going down for a splash, but he'll hope to stay in his boat. His favorite course is here in Po. Rossi from a family of kayakers. We've seen Carolina Rossi kick off semi finals in the women's K1. Up. Number eight, really tight, really fast. Get the speed on the exit. 25 year old K1 silver medalist at the 2019 Lima Pan American Games. Beaten by Pepe Gonzalez, which we'll see later. So no disgrace in being beaten by a really Brazilian. Rossi family with an Olympic paddler in their midst, Sebastian Rossi. It's uh, World Under 12, Luca Rossi. Big to take advantage of his favorite course. The penalty, he'll hope, won't harm him too much. A little bit slower this last part. Try 
to meet USA. Well, it's enough for a second at the moment, plus 1.52 seconds on Joseph's time. Rossi, second quickest at the moment is Matis Soudi of Morocco. Puts down his phone. Now focus on the course ahead. That was a great story from uh, Hannah Craig who went in the women's K1. And she uh, penalty in the semi-final of the Olympic Games in London and the head of Irish canoeing called a trusted analyst who is live currently on Irish television and he took the call and I don't expect anyone to be giving you a call Beth Van, while we're live here <laughs> at the moment he's put his phone away to focus on the event ahead world 97 20-year-old participated in the senior 2019 World Championships, although couldn't escape the heats. Rocking just slightly quicker than Joseph. Yes, he's from France, but he's competing for Morocco. So in the well here, the course in Pope. Trains with his club in Rennes. Did make his appearance in Tassin. 21st, though, overall. Whether he can improve on that, we'll see. Hey, really good enough on the left, really good last section. It's going to be. He'll try to catch. Yeah. Well, a terrific run for Amati Saudi, French born Moroccan, producing a terrific ride. He is now second to go sub 100, 98.87.84 faster than the American Joseph. It's maybe going to be enough for the final. Tomish Zima next onto the waters, the 20 year old world 76. A silver medal at the 2020 Under 23 European Championships. That was in K1 team event. Only actually the semi finals of the K1 Under 23 ranked 18. Certainly tough ask this World Cup event, but has an opportunity. We've certainly seen Saudi and Joseph give themselves a chance to reach the final yet to have anyone qualified and still so much of the field yet to hit the water and at the moment he's fast two seconds from five faster than Matisse we can see he play very well with all the current in the middle of the gate keep a really good speed Let's see the lax, last tricky part. Certainly want to successfully negotiate the last section after such a good opening ride. Yes, it's a good run for him. I think the time would be good. Yeah. Well, really cutting into the time. Five point eight. Well, three seconds quicker. To Saudi, and suddenly we're seeing some really top performances inside the top 100 in the world. It's Matteo Desnos of Brazil, is the next to take his opportunity. So, Matteo Desnos used to train in Po, he's a French and he's competing for. Brazil right now, so he can go really fast here in Pope and at the moment do great. Just yes. point 
0.03 seconds quicker, but still a long way to go. I was going to say, uh, Bertrand, what uh, are the type of considerations that paddlers have in changing their nationality? Is it, is it to do with training or uh, the better support from a national go government? You have different circumstances, you know. For him, it's because he's the boyfriend of Anna Satila. So he decided to go there and live in with her. So it's so much easier to compete for Brazil. But you you have to you have to to have your support from your countries. So from Brazil and from France. You can you can't really do whatever you, you want. I suppose as well Brazil are an emerging power in kayaking, so he's gonna be one of the top Brazilians as opposed to in a huge field of French paddlers. Yes for sure. It's easier to go into the final into the, the team in Brazil than France. The well, French level are really really competitive. Competitive. Matteo Desno happy with his run, second quickest, just shy of Thomas Zima's time as Matteo Dobi of Belgium, another uh, switched allegiance from France. Yes, exactly, he's from France as well, and he decided to compete for Belgium. It's a long time ago. Uh, he switched in 2007, the Grenoble native. Uh, became Belgian champion in 2014. One K1 medal at World Cup earned in Po. That was five years ago in 2015. Has competed at Olympic level in 2012. Came 11th in London after semi final elimination. And he was also the French champion one time. We have a lot of experience. 38 years of age, certainly. Know this course well. But he's missing a little bit today. It's not his best day. Missing gate number five. Finished from the final. Despite his Olympic pedigree, Matteo Dobi not be back. The miss game really is just lights out in terms of attempts to try and qualify. As we see there, penalty review as well in his future. So the miss game in 20 means it's really curtains for Dobi. Yeah, I think he missed in the red. You can see as he comes to the end, it's a little shrug. <laughs> Tries to take the positives out of his appearance here. <laughs> Certainly one who doesn't need to be told that's not what was seen as an expectation for him. As we see the penalty review, although in grand scheme of things, not going to make a massive amount of difference. He's an experienced paddler, so he knows sometimes it can go fast, but sometimes not. We'll it's good to accept, you know, sometimes. Well, as we were mentioning, just being out on the waters is uh, already a victory for the sport, considering all the challenges, particularly uh, across the world, but in Europe, with the uh, return of lockdowns. Uh, it's uh, really great to be yeah. back here as Anatole Delassou gets himself limbered up. He was the quickest in the unofficial heats yesterday, despite just being 19 years of age. A French paddler with a huge future. Yes, yeah, he's a really talented paddler, and also he lives near to Po, near to the coast actually. So he trained a lot of this course, he know a lot, and I don't know how many times he spent on this course actually, but a lot, a lot, a lot of time. So he can go really fast today. 
And I think this run at this moment is pretty good. Let's see the time. Go, go, go. Blink and you'd miss it. Yes. And Anatole Delassou once again, the quickest as things stand. No one yet has been able to beat him during this weekend. Stunning from Delassou as Thomas Persinga of Argentina looks on. I wonder, it is just the semi final, so he's not going to let Delassou's time take his focus off his own performance. His last World Cup final back in 2017 in Ivrea in Italy, finished fourth on that occasion, three years on. Can he try and push himself towards a podium? Yeah, he's also French, and he used to train here in Po. He, he, he was one of the first paddlers training this course here in Po. So, he stopped a little bit two years ago, I think, and he decided to keep going a little bit then. So it's a serious battler, a lot of experience, and sometimes experiences can talk. And only one second behind is not too bad. A little bit low on this up. Spin on gate 18. It's stuck on this hole. It's gonna be hard. Cut to French guy, Anatole. Still 11 paddlers to come. We're yet to see anyone officially qualify for the final. Delasso's time of 95.65, looking hard to beat in the minute. And certainly Thomas Perugé unable to really put himself in a competitive position for the final. See, not quite that quick. See the three players: Igor Sivier of Ukraine takes to the water. Reached the semi-final of the 2020 European Championships in Prague, but 16th overall was in Tassin last month. First World Cup event since the COVID-19 crisis hit. Finished 12th on that occasion. World 56 with a chance again to try and reach a World Cup final. The last Graham was as well three years ago in Hebrea when he finished 10th. Just touched number 12. It's too bad because his line was pretty good at this moment. He had the fastest line to touch. It was two seconds, 12. But Zviet would have been hoping to try and emulate his training partner's performance, Victoria Hus, having made the women's K1 final. Her Ukrainian compatriot battling to try and give himself even a chance of doing Likewise. Stuck a little bit on this last hole. Let's see the last up on the left. You can really tell a lot from their facial expressions as well as the boat positioning. Uh, how, how the run is going. He just looked like he just had to dig himself out of a hole. And not enough to improve his time. Just over 100 seconds. Uh, yeah, 5 lost. seconds, 0.04 time at dinner soon. Yeah, he lost a lot of time on this second part. France. I see Benjamin Venia. Po native as well. He won the second course of the Olympic selections held here ahead of Martin Bergy and Boris Novo. So uh, 46, so certainly fancy his chances here. Yes, he's one of the best 
Kerker in France, and especially in Pau, and you can see this up on the left was amazing, really fast, and you can see a different style. He's really playing with his boat, he's smooth on the water. Looks very relaxed. Yeah, really relaxed, and he plays with the water, and but he's also really strong. You can't really see that. But Loving the uh, split shot of the drone, the main cameras, and enjoying that as much as Venia is. Second up on Delosu. Palois said he has his sights already set on Paris 2024. Left de the newspaper. It's certainly so difficult within the French, the French team to try and qualify for the Olympics with so few places available. Yeah, sure. It's out there soon. Certainly, there was a bit of controversy about the French qualification. Oh, that, that was a really good run. It's too bad for his touch. Well, it just seemed to get away from him in the second half, but he seems happy enough. Currently the third fastest of the field. Denisu still the quickest ahead of the Czech Republic. Sima and Lavinia sitting third, but now the charismatic Pedro Pepe Gonzalez realizes he's on camera and ready to attack the course here. Multi-discipline paddler, just like Anna Satira, his compatriot. Finished sixth in the Rio Games, the best ever performance from a Brazilian canoeist. Also the reigning K1 Pan American Games champion from the competition in Lima in 2019. He duck of the head there. Yeah. He was too high on this gate, so he decided to enter on the last, uh, next uh, side. Well, he won a bronze in Tassin last month in K1. He also took extreme K1 gold. He's looking to medal again. World number 39. Certainly would at least expect to comfortably qualify for the final. We're yet to get any official confirmation of anyone qualifying. Still a number of riders to go. He's a bit tired on every gate, so I think he lose a bit time on every gate. Fifth overall, sub 90, sub 100, but that run is good news for France. It's the first qualified for the final. Anatole Delassou will be back. Not a great surprise, but again, teenager from France showing his masterfulness on this course. Gonçalves will hope surely will have done enough, but we'll have to wait and see. Pavel Higiel of Russia next. Certainly had a battle with Pedro Gonzalez for the K1 Extreme. And Tassin, who ended up disqualified from the semi-final. So looking for a better performance this time around. Here in Po. Two Russian medals at the Rio 2018 World Games. Taking a bronze medal in K1. Russian yeah. with a penalty at 12. You can see it's affected him because, in fact, without the penalty, he'd be the quickest thus far. Yes, and you know you can have a penalty and go faster than the other one. Focus obviously in the semi-final is making the final. They're worrying about your 
position and it's all about being in that top 10. Uh, in a final for you, where would you prefer to be in the positions in terms of would you rather go later and know what to what to beat or go earlier and try and set the time? Depends the Kaiga. For some, it's better to start the last one, but I think the best best way is in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pavel Egel's certainly given himself a little bit of a worry for the rest of the field because he's plus 6.7 Delisu's time, leaving him precariously placed in 10. So a big problem for the Russian, but Zima has qualified along with Delisu as Michael Smolin takes to the water, the Polish-born American. Finished ninth in the Tassin World Cup final in October. Also 12th at the Rio Games of 2016. An impressive performer, born in Krakow. Turn just before the gate. He wasn't too deep on this gate number eight. So he loses he a, little, a little bit of time, but he don't have a penalty actually. Done well to save it. Save that situation, the 2014 under 23 world champion in K1. Bronze medal at the World Championships in London 2015 and in the Pan American Games in Toronto in the same year, but he hasn't quite made the step up. Take you a little bit on this hole again. It's going to be hard. Missing a little bit his line here. Trying to push, push hard. This is the last up. Yes. He really needs to be quick here to try and pinch a top ten finish at the moment. It's going to be not enough. He is ranked 10. It's uh, unlikely to be good enough. The other American is pushing, pushing him. Joseph, the uh, top ranked American thus far, fifth as things stand. The good news, though, for France, Chemin Avenia is the third paddler to qualify for the final. As Czechs take to the water. Dava Vizhnek, Radilek, 33-year-old, an Olympic K1 silver medalist back in London 2012, five-time world gold medalist, but only one in K1 on home water Prague 2013. His uh, last gold World Cup event 2019, although that was an extreme K1. He's going to need an extremely strong performance to push himself to the final. He really fights on the two gate. 15. Okay, one second faster. Good spin. Certainly had success at World Cup events. Radelek, five K1 golds, two silvers and a bronze. The last gold medal he won back in 2016. Trying to turn back the clock. He just took the last gate. It's too bad, the second penalty is sixth. There it is confirmed, but Radelek, little grimace there, but Still put himself in the chance on the final place, especially because confirmation coming through Brazilian Pedro Pepe Gonzalez and Pavel Egel both actually missing gates. So they are way out of contention, and that is given a huge opportunity to some of the others. We said this earlier as Antoine Lune, Portugal, takes to the water, pointing his way to uh, what he hopes will be a final spot, the world number 19. The 
couldn't escape the semi-finals the 2019 Olympic test in Tokyo, the 2019 Worlds or 2020 European Championships. Could only manage a 13th placing World Cup event in Slovenia last month. So far, four paddlers into the final. Delosu, Zima, Renia, and Desno safely through. Six spots remain. Six riders to paddle their way. Yeah, we can see the different style of this paddler. is really like a little bit heavier and stronger. He's like a little bit Benjamin but you know when you see the paddling between Benjamin and oh, I just missed gate number 22. Just oh, see. that is too bad because he did a really good run. And he just missed the final on gate 22. Well, that is absolutely brutal and a perfect illustration of why it doesn't matter how good you are. If you lose focus or position for a split second, it can be curtains. And that is now three riders who would have been expecting to battle for a final spot. And that's Lone joining Gonzalez and Eagle. It's missed Gates. See Joseph of America join. Desno, Avenia, Zima, and Delasu in the final. Now, Juan Crespo of Spain will aim to not suffer a similar fate just down on Delasu's time, thanks to that penalty of the very first gate. Hoping to keep his focus with a final spot very much available to the 32 year old. Touch gate number one again. A lot of paddler is touching number eight today. It's maybe the gate is maybe low or too low. I don't know. Took bronze at the 2019 World event at Segre Olympic Park. Did with team gold alongside David Yorente. Samuel Hermas, that's a decade after a bronze medal in 2009, also in La Sue d'Urgel. Experienced paddler, but he's uh, yeah, had an yeah, absolute nightmare. 50, actually. So he proved how this course is hard because he has a lot of experience and he still is the gates. So when you saw before the youngest, can understand them it's not that easy well i guess that's the problem it's uh gonna be a long thing for crespo but really anything can happen on the water and no matter your experience or skill if you uh, lose focus or position then uh, the young guns can have a chance to make an impression that uh, now means six paddlers qualify for the final. Delisu, Sima, Renia, Desno, Joseph of America, and now Radilek of the Czech Republic. As David Llorente takes to the water. He's smiling beforehand. Will he be smiling? Come to finish the 23-year-old, the 2019 World K1 Silver. At Segre Olympic Park, the gold going to Jiri Rushkavec, Czech, the reigning double overall World Cup winner. Obviously, no overall title in 2020. Rushkavec will hope it's his compatriot, Rush Dish, going out last, the world number six. Spain still hoping that they could do the women and men's K1 double from the Olympic champion Gerard in the women's final. David Llorente provides some Spanish excitement in the men's. 
certainly giving himself a lot of work to do with three penalties. Yeah, three penalties already. It's going to be hard for the final. Yes, five seconds and three. It's not enough. Well, bad news for David Llorente. His facial expression says it all. But terrific news for Bessonnier, who makes his place in the final assured. Switched France to Argentina. It's a whole knowledge certainly helping him that seven paddlers qualified as Martin too good. Looks for a route to the final. It's just beaten by Delessou in the uh, heat penalty. And seeing the young Frenchman as the uh, top rider. It's an early penalty for the Swiss paddler. Yeah, he can go really fast. He's not that consistent, but when he decides to go really fast, he go really fast. So we have his chance today. Spain 11. Oh, it's pretty tricky on 12. Let's see if he has penalty, I'm not sure. Never made incredibly a World Cup final. So a huge chance for the Geneva native living info. In a back to back European finals here in 2019, finishing 14th and 7th in Prague in September. Finishing here for Batman, he's certainly not making it an easy ride. He's really tied on every gate. So you have to be tight, but I think it's a little bit too much. So you lose time. Uh, we'll see, he's certainly down on Delosu again. And he is ranked fourth. But there is a marker, maybe just waiting for confirmation on his side. And as things stand, too good should make the final, but we'll wait on that. We certainly saw from Gonzalez and Eagle, this gates were blocked up after it looked to be towards the top 10. We'll wait to see, it looks like that is confirmed as Boris Nuvo tries to raise the noise here. Unfortunately, a lot easier than there being spectators allowed Still the focus now on the ride ahead for the world number eight. Former world and European K1 champion. The expert is talking on this course. He's one of the with the most experiences. Boris Neveu from France is going to represent France at the next Olympic championship. That was something he called a big relief after two unsuccessful attempts to reach the pinnacle of the sport. And we do have a penalty review, so he is uh, currently the quickest in the field, but we'll wait to see if that remains. So he don't have a penalty, but he have a penalty review. It's because the other athlete can contest and say, oh, I think he have a penalty on this gate or this gate. So, they ask the judges, and the judges decide with the video review. Yeah. Eagle-eyed competitors trying to knock Boris Pobo Nebu off his perch. Although in the end, slower than Delisou, but we're waiting on the penalty review. As things stand, he would qualify for the final in fourth. And it depends on what penalty review it is. One. It's just a two second, it's not going to be a big problem. Yeah, we can't really see from here, so... And even with the two seconds added, yeah. he's still qualified, so yeah, but no real stress. If, if you have a 50 on this gate, it's finished for him, so we have to wait. But the judges... But they are, they are different judges from the bank, from the video review, and we have to 
really such tight. Such a tight decision, isn't it? It's really tight, but we can't really see from from here. Well, the penalty is confirmed. Oh, you have 50 seconds of penalty. And what a big shock here. Just millimeters from Bobo. And he is out. Vít uh, Krimdish of the Czech Republic, world number six. He'll have seen the run of Nebu. Consider his mastery normally here in Bo. Czech rider certainly want to take all precautions to make the final. Bo is certainly where he's enjoyed most success internationally. World K1 Silver in 2017 and K1 Team World Gold 2019. Double gold in the city at the European Championships. K1 European Champion, K1 Team Gold. So one who also knows this course well. And he is qualified with the quickest time, 0.60. Quicker than Delosu, blink and you'd miss it. Clean dish. Yeah, it was a clear run, no penalties in the middle of the gate, but I'm sure he can go faster and we will see that this afternoon. Well, three paddlers with clean runs. Clean dish, Delosu, and another Czech, Zima, certainly put themselves in pole position for the podium. And still final will be a different kettle of fish but some shocks in the final ten Igor Tsiviet Spasiniak and Elik Joshua Joseph also making their way into the final it's Quindish Derisu Zima Lenia and Dugu the top five quickest some shocks there Olympic 2021 Paddler Boris Nebu is out alongside Lodi Gonsalves and Igel after missed gates. Well, a terrific men's semi final. Shocks and splashes. France was safely two riders into the final, but Boris Nebu with a missed gate misses out. Looks like being France versus the Czech Republic. British, world number six, put himself in a favorite status. We'll wait to see later how the finals will go. At the moment is British, Derasu and Zima, the top three to qualify in the final. See the top 10 go head to head later today.